Hello everyone and welcome to Mountain Travel Sobek's Best of Britain webinar. My name is Miles Marnbeck and I'm one of Mountain Travel Sobek's senior guides in the UK and Ireland. And I'm very excited to be able to talk to you about two of our trips, one in Scotland and one in England. So, moving straight in, um, I'm going to play a short introductory video to the flavour. Well, hopefully that has whet your appetite um, for these two trips, and now I'm going to chat to you a little bit about why the UK, and then we'll move into talking about each of the two trips individually. So the UK has a very rich and diverse cultural and natural history, with the history going back to the Stone Age, with amazing heritage, architecture, and a country that's been influenced by many other conquering nations over time, so flavours from France and other parts of the world that have influenced us. We may not have Africa's big five, but we definitely have an incredible biodiversity, and arguably the best biodiversity in Europe, and much of it's really accessible, and you're likely to see a lot of wildlife on your trips with us. So these varied landscapes are really born out of the most incredible geology, and in the UK we've got some of the world's oldest rocks. And certainly, if you're on our MTS Scotland hiking trip, you have the potential to touch some of these rocks, and probably the oldest thing you will ever touch in your entire life. Some of these rocks are born from volcanoes or laid down under really ancient oceans. And then, subsequently, we've, there's been loads of glacial action, and it creates spectacular sites that you can now experience today. So on our inspiring hikes, we're going to go through these landscapes and features and through the layer upon layer of human and natural history. And on the hikes, you're going to meet some really colourful local characters and friendly people who will add really fascinating insights into the areas that you're going to be hiking through. The accommodation and food revolution. I am pretty sure, um, based on feedback from other guests over the years, that those of you who have not been to the UK before, the food and accommodation will exceed your expectations. It's very authentic and of a really high standard. And yes, of course, like anywhere, we still have junk food outlets, but in terms of the places that you'll be eating, the restaurants and the accommodation, I think you're going to be really um, surprised and what you're going to be eating and where you're going to be staying will compare very favourably with anywhere else in Europe. So, firstly then, I'm going to talk to you in a little bit more detail about our amazing Hiking Wild Scotland adventure. Scotland is, and I'm biased because I live here, one of the most naturally beautiful areas in the world. And, you know, at any time of year the scenery is totally awe-inspiring. You have spectacular waterfalls, there's beautiful spring flowers, if you come in the fall, the intense color of the heather bloom is just mind-blowing. And then all the mountains, which are full of both myth and majesty. So it's really crucial you bring your camera. Then nine days is the length of the trip, and we're starting and finishing in Inverness. And uh, you'll be heading through a whole variety. As you can see on the little map there, you can see the, the scope of the trip, and you'll be traveling through raw wildness in places like the Outer Hebrides, and then in the Cairngorms, we're in Arctic alpine terrain, so quite a lot of variety in, in your nine-day tour. 
it's fully guided, so you're going to have a very experienced um, and knowledgeable guide who will look after you and they'll share their passion and knowledge for Scotland as well as supporting you in all the other aspects of your experience. This is a moderately graded trip and so the hiking is pretty straightforward and I guess the maximum distances on this trip would be up to seven miles in a day and in terms of elevation on a daily basis the maximum you're likely to be involved in would be approaching 2,000 feet of ascent. So as I already mentioned, these local encounters, um, some of them planned, some of them spontaneous, really add to your experience and your guide will kind of facilitate that and you'll really get under the skin of these places and a real sense of authentic Scotland. So we take a lot of care in looking at the types of accommodation that fit with our trips and we have relationships with some fantastic accommodation providers and these guys are handpicked to, to fit the trips that we're doing such as um, the Lovett um, which is in, near Fort Augustus um, and that's in the top picture you can see on the screen there and also the lovely Hotel Hebrides on Tarbot which is in the Isle of Harris in the Outer Hebrides. All of the accommodations have lots of local character and charm and they're really well located in terms of avoiding too much in terms of transfer time so they fit very well with the proposed itineraries that we have. And then as I already mentioned this idea around the authentic fresh cuisine and I guess I'll offer you a personal recommendation of mine. If you're on this trip when you're in the Outer Hebrides I'd recommend trying at least once having some seafood because it will have been caught in the ocean that you can see from your table as you look out from the Outer Hebrides, um, from the Hotel Hebrides, I should say. So what I'll do now is I'll walk you through the itinerary in a little bit more detail. So, <clears throat> day one, we will meet you in Scotland's most northerly, and in my view, one of the best located cities in Scotland, in Inverness. But I am biased because I live there. On day two, um, we'll transfer to Ullapool, which is further up on the west coast, and if you remember on the map, you saw a moment ago, um, and then we'll take a ferry across the Minch, which is a lovely stretch of sea between the mainland and the Outer Hebrides, and we arrive at Stornoway, which is the capital of the Isle of Lewis. And then after lunch, we'll take a journey through an amazing array of iconic historical sites, visiting the 5,000-year-old Neolithic standing stones in Kalanish, and you can see some, some there in that second picture on this slide. And then we'll also visit an Iron Age Broch, um, which is like a fortified tower, and a renovated Black House village with the lovely um, thatched roofs and thick stone walls. So, days three and four, still on the Outer Hebrides, we're going to explore some really stunning landscapes in the mountains of North Harris and we'll hike in to um, one of the most impressive um, crags anywhere in Scotland at a place called Strong Ulladale where we can stare at the incredible overhanging cliffs which have been scaled and there are climbing routes up them as well as perfect habitat for golden eagles. And then at the end of the day we'll head to a beautiful beach at Hoosnish which overlooks an island that's called Scarp off the west coast and this island once boasted the world's first rocket propelled mail delivery. So day four we're then going to start a walk on the lovely beautiful um, golden sands of Luskintyre Beach followed by meeting a local Harris Tweed weaver. It won't actually be the particular gentleman in this picture, it's a lovely woman called Katie Campbell and uh, she'll tell you all about um, the kind of things that go on in relation to a really unique weaving operation that you find in Harris. So heading south, we then, uh, from Tarbot, we're going to then travel on the beautiful uh, winding golden road and we'll hike up to the top of Towhead, which has amazing views up and down the West Isles in every direction. So on day five, we leave the West Isles and we go by ferry again across to the Isle of Skye, another iconic island off the west coast of Scotland. And we'll go for a hike 
on the Trotnish Ridge at a spectacular cliff and rock pinnacle area known as the Kerang, and you can see that in the top left picture there. It's a place where in the past people would hide themselves and all their cattle and sheep when Viking marauders passed by. So there are some really off the beaten track pieces of that ridge. We then head south past probably one of the most impressive mountain ridges anywhere in Scotland, the Black Coolin. And leaving Sky, we will head onto the mainland uh, over the bridge and we will then go to a, a very spectacularly located castle called Elan Donna, which was destroyed by cannon fire during the 18th century Jacobite rebellion, but lovingly restored to how you see it in the picture in front of you now over a period of 20 years by the owner, Lieutenant Colonel John McRae Gilstrap. Aha! Wouldn't be Scotland without referring to the whisky. So on day six, we start with a visit to the Tomatin Whisky Distillery with optional whisky tasting of the Highland malts that they produce there. And then after that, we'll continue into the Cairngorms National Park, which is the UK's biggest national park, where we'll hike to a beautiful loch, Loch Garten, where at the right time of year, you can see osprey nesting, which is a spectacular sight. On day seven, you'll have a bit of time to explore the village of Abingmore, or if you wish to relax in your hotel for the first part of the morning. And then later, we hike through the Rothy Mercus Forest to the beautiful Loch and Yellen, the Loch of the Island. We then carry on through the forest to the Wailochans, which means to the Hawthorne Lochans in Gaelic. And then we also have the later in the day an opportunity to witness a sheepdog demonstration before returning to our hotel. So on day eight, hiking in the Cairngorms, we're going to be in one of the most, um, the biggest of Scotland's mountain areas, and it's a high Arctic Alpine plateau. So there are really unusual plants and birds such as snow bunting and ptarmigan that are more usually found in the Arctic. And once we get up onto the plateau there, there's just spectacular views in every direction. So on our final day, we return you to Inverness for your onward air and rail transfers. And I really hope that some of the images and the descriptions I've given you inspire you to come. And I look forward to welcoming you to Scotland, hopefully in the near future. So I'd like now to move on to our other trip that we're going to talk to you about today, which is our England adventure, hiking England's coast to coast. So this trip um, was created originally by Alfred Wainwright in 1973, and it's become a must do for the serious hikers. It's worth noting that Mountain Travel Sobex, the only North American travel company to do the whole of the original route that Alfred Wainwright created every step of the way. It is in a lot of people's list of the top 10 hikes in the world. To walk the whole 192 miles coast to coast is, is a big achievement and something that everyone who does it feels justifiably proud of. It's a 16 day point to point trip. So we have um, two guides walking with you and another driving a van, moving your luggage and everything from place to place and meeting us at various times and offering lifts to those who perhaps want to have a little bit of time out. Um, we also do stay in some of the hotels, we stay in for more than one night just to reduce that packing and unpacking. Just like the previous trip, this is fully guided and so you'll have um, a guide who is very, very familiar with the area and they'll be able to introduce you to all sorts of wonderful insights and share the wildlife and cultural history and everything with you as well as looking after you in all other ways on your trip. Unlike the other trip, which was moderately graded, this one is a strenuously graded trip. So it's only one step down from Mountain Travel Sobek's highest grade. And it's, it is a tough trip. And so, you know, it's something that's important to gauge your fitness and experience um, carefully. Um, but having said that, to give you an idea, the distance, the maximum distance that you would walk in a day is probably 20 miles. Um, and then you have probably the biggest elevation on any one day is approaching just under, just shy of 3,000 feet. 
The trails are established, but they are pretty narrow uh, in places. They're rough and rocky or maybe muddy in parts. So a good pair of proper waterproof hiking boots as opposed to hiking shoes is essential for this trip. And again, there's lots of colourful characters that we're going to meet. You're, you're walking right away across the country, so you're walking through three national parks and you're also you're going to explore the interesting history between Lancashire and Yorkshire and the Wars of the Roses and that kind of conversations. Um, so you'll, you'll end up um, getting a really good understanding of this fantastic part of Northern England. Just in the same way, um, we used a variety of um, really wonderful local hotels and also um, local hostelries. Um, you can see the Fox and Hounds pub, which is the bottom. Um, we don't actually stay there, but we do stop there for a drink and, um, you know, lots of character. And then equally, we have some really beautiful hotels, as you can see, the, the Inn on the Lake, which is the hotel in the top picture there, you will be staying in on this trip. So, lots of local character and charm, again, really well situated, so trying to minimise the amount of transfer time um, on this point-to-point -point trip. And again, you know, authentic fresh cuisine, it's worth um, reflecting that you're going to see a lot of sheep at various times, and um, lamb, whilst not available in every single place that we'll eat, it's certainly one of my favourites, and the lamb shank is to die for. Or another food must is at least at some point um, is to try some sticky toffee pudding if you've never had some. And that's available in almost every place that we eat. So you could even do a comparative study of the sticky toffee pudding across the whole trip. So we'll now go into a little bit more detail about the itinerary on the coast to coast trip. So the first six days, you're going to be based in the Lake District, and a large proportion of that time, you will actually be within the Lake District National Park. Um, this is probably where the toughest hiking takes place, and the, probably the most, the largest and most spectacular mountains um, are definitely found in this area. So starting in St. Bees, which you can see is the beach in the top left-hand picture there, it's traditional to post in the Irish Sea before we set off. So the Lake District is an incredibly beautiful area with lots of lovely secluded valleys and many beautiful lakes. Hence the name of the area. And the, the one you can see in the bottom right hand picture that we walk along the side of is called Ennerdale Water. During the time in the lakes we're going to be hiking on Roman roads and we'll be passing through scenery that inspired William Wordsworth. There's the most unbelievable amount of dry stone walls will start to appear. And this is a theme that will run throughout the trip and you'll see different styles and just marvel at the effort that it took to build some of these walls in the locations that you're going to see them. As well as that, you're going to see all sorts of sheep, um, such as, you'll, by the end of the trip, you're going to know the difference between a Herdwick, a Blackface, a Swaledale, or a Blue-faced Leicester. And also waterfalls and streams. We will need to cross some interesting terrain. And so again, just to emphasize the need for those waterproof boots, but it all adds, the waterfalls are spectacular and the stream crossings are all done. You know, they're, they're, none of them are too challenging. So moving into the middle part of the trip, day seven to 12, we'll have moved from the Lake District and we'll move into an area that's known as the Yorkshire Dales. And again, a large part of these days you'll be in, within the Yorkshire Dales National Park. It's quite contrasting to the Lake District with much more rolling countryside and completely different geology and as a result, quite different flora. We'll pass through these lovely valleys and peaceful woodlands and alongside some really lovely tranquil rivers. The areas made famous by the books of the Yorkshire vet James Herriot. So if you haven't come across his books, and you're interested in this trip, that might be something you'd enjoy reading. And in many ways, um, this area hasn't changed a lot since he wrote his books. Passing these little hamlets and villages, we can witness the f lively farming communities going about their daily activities. 
We're going to see much in the way of ancient history too, with things like lime kilns and ancient stone barns, and probably culminating in some respects in the spectacular 11th century Richmond Castle that you can see pictured here. And you, on this trip, you'll actually get uh, an opportunity to go in and visit the castle and have a tour. So, the latter part of the trip, the last few days, we are moving again from our second national park in the Yorkshire Dales area, we're moving to the North York Moors, which is another completely contrasting landscape to what you've seen already. And a lot of the walking that you'll be doing on this final section is also within the North York Moors National Park. And as you can see on the bottom right picture there, it's much more open moorland as opposed to the grassy hills. There's lots of heather, which you can see in that picture. So particularly if you come on this trip later in the year, August, September, then all the heather will be in bloom. We stay in some really beautiful villages with places um, that have got names like Osmotherly. And walking over these amazing grouse moors from village to village, you're going to see a great range of bird life. And uh, at one point, as we cross the moors, we're on an old ironstone quarry railway, which leads to a 400-year-old inn called the Lion Inn at a place called Blakey, which is totally in the middle of nowhere and has its fair share of ghost stories attached to it. Our last day sees us leaving the moors and eventually making the coastline um, of the North Sea. And here you are, you can see in the bottom right-hand picture, um, we've reached the coastline and then we have a really lovely um, latter half of that final day is spent walking along the coast to our journey's end at the very picturesque um, seaside town of Robin Hood's Bay, which is perched on the top of the cliffs. And so finally we dip our toes in the North Sea to complete the ritual of our crossing of England and enjoy a well-earned pint or orange juice if you prefer in Wainwright's Bar before our final night in the local hotel. And then the next day we transfer to York Railway Station for your onward travel. I've led this trip many times and it's a truly fantastic trip. And again, I would really love to welcome you and share this iconic walk across the country. So thank you very much for listening. And this final slide shows that there, these are the contact details for you to get in touch. And there is a special discount promotion for people engaging with this webinar. So it's well worth thinking about the fact that if you quote the fact that you've attended this webinar, you can get £500, sorry, $500, I apologise, off the coast-to-coast -coast trip or $300 off the Hiking Wild Scotland trip.